Hello everyone. This is the 23rd part of the story, Percy Jackson, the God of Magic. Chapter 111 Before leaving hell, I had to take care of a few things, things I had promised Honey when I became the mayor, that the system would change for those like her. This task could only be completed in one of two ways, one, killing Lucifer, and two, negotiating with him, and considering the big baddie of the Bible was still stronger than me, even after my power boost, I decided to make a deal, with the devil, huh, a deal with the devil. To be honest, I thought I would get to that point years before this. Dealing with Lucifer was going to be difficult, or so I would say, you see, when I went to his palace, he seemed ready to fight me, and while that is something quite common in my life, he seemed almost as distressed as me. It didn't take me long to connect the dots and see what had happened, my father, had paid a visit to him, and well. I can only assume how things went from there, but considering how tended he looked, not well at all. So taking that into account, I offered the following, he could either fight me to the death, which he seemed to want with all his might, but would risk summoning the hentai nightmare I have for a father or he could do me a favor here and there about the situation in hell, and in return I would leave hell for good, making the chance of that man visiting his realm less likely to happen. For a moment, it seemed like Lucifer was having an inner debate about what option was the best, but in the end, selected the one that would work best for us. And so, the hellborn citizens got what they wanted, and I was free of my commitments in hell. After that, I opened a portal from hell to New York, where I would release some stress in the streets, by pranking and having some fun around town, maybe visit the sorority girls I nailed last time, and before I hear the cosmos say, you have a succubi under you, yes. I know, but I'm a firm believer you don't fuck your employees, or, self-appointed slaves, it would be weird. As I walked the streets of New York with Honey by my side, I was stopped by a weird-looking man, and boy I was ready to throw some hands, thinking he was a demon or something, but the man ended up being a recruiter for a strip club down the street, and my first thought was, this motherfucker thinks I'm a pimp, and Honey is one of my bitches, and wants to hire her, but I was quickly proved wrong when the man offered me a job. Uh, say what now? I was so surprised, I didn't know what emotion was the correct one to display, in one part. I was flattered, but, while I was flattered, I also felt insulted. Did he really think I was that bad economically that I needed to work a pole? You will make five thousand an hour, the man offered, and I accepted, but soon he would regret hiring me because I was a type of stripper he had no idea how to deal with. I was a pranking stripper. And so I went with a weird guy to the strip club, where I would prank the owner and the girls inside dressed as a firefighter. My prank was simple yet diabolical, I would dress with a very conservative firefighter outfit that covered everything. And under that I would enchant my clothes with new ones, creating a loop of undressing that would never end. So, you are stripper now, Honey giggled seeing frustration around, how much for a private dance hot stuff, or maybe a quick fuck. I'm a pranking stripper that likes to tease these lonely sad ladies by making them think I will eventually show something, when in reality that will never happen, not a gigolo. I gasped insulted, my art was making sure these horny ladies questioned how was that, no matter how many clothes I took off, I always had a new costume underneath and the only thing they would get to see for a brief moment were them godly thighs. Hi hot stuff, a very attractive blonde woman said, with a rather seductive smile that promised a good time, me and my girls, the girls aka her friends were equally hot, want to have some fun, how does $10,000 sound for you to fuck us all? I turned to Honey and smiled, I am a gigolo now, I looked at the girls and turned back to Honey once again, I'm a free gigolo. A real man doesn't ask for money. Oh come on. Honey complained. After having a rather good time releasing both sexual and pranking tension, I decided to go to Asgard. I was curious as to what Hestia was doing, but decided to go after relaxing a bit, mostly to avoid exploding my frustrations at her, 
besides when the universe offers you five supermodels for free. You say yes. It's not fair. I am your personal succubi, and yet I don't get any love, honey pouted and I snorted. Honey, I'll be honest with ya, I don't fuck friends, I chuckled, I value the little friendships I have too much, to risk them with a night of pleasure, strangers? I don't mind, the chance of them finding me ever again is very slim, but, the people close to me, I don't want it. In your sleep, Honey chuckled, but then her demeanor turned rather serious, in your sleep you kept saying one name, Hestia, Hestia, Hestia. I eyed her not sure why that would be worth mentioning, well, she is the most important person in my life, my best friend if you will. Yeah, tell yourself that. Honey snorted in clear amusement, her lips perking up into a small smirk. I, she is, I wasn't sure where she was going with this. Adam, we succubi can see and eat emotions, Honey stated, lust though is the only one that we can actually touch or handle. The rest are quite toxic for us, unless they are connected in some way to lust, I will be honest, I was lost. In your sleep, when you said her name, I felt love your love, and is not the kind of love you are telling yourself you have for her, because, believe me I know, you want more. Chapter, 112 I I the succubi in shock, she was high or something, cause I didn't love Hestia like that. I mean yes, I did love her, but not romantically, she was my friend, the one person that made the idea of not giving up worth it, the only one I would die for. She was my safe haven in this world of nightmare, she. Oh no. Was it true, did I love Hestia? It was true, f-u-c-k. Of all the beings in this universe I could have fell for, I fell for her, the one not interested in anything beyond friendship. Well, it didn't matter if I loved her or not, I was happy with just being close to her, and that didn't have to be romantically speaking. I can taste your love, Honey giggled, I can't believe you didn't know until no, she snorted, rolling her eyes at me, don't worry, I'm sure she will be happy to hear how you feel. Hestia is, against having a relationship, I snorted, and she deserved better than me, better than anyone in this world, because of her brother, Zeus, and her dad Kronos, she decided it was best to stay single forever. Were those two that bad? Honey inquired, her eyes sparkling with curiosity. Well, Kronos ate all of his children, including Hestia to avoid a prophecy that foretold he was going to be dethroned by one of his children, I sighed. That man had to be one if not the worst father in the universe, and, well, Hestia remembers everything, from her being in her mother's arms, to the cries of her mother begging Kronos not to eat her, that scarred her. Then her little brother, who practically invented infidelity. I chuckled, Hestia would watch as Zeus destroyed families, and hurt his wife just to get his dick into something, and well, it hurt her. As the goddess of the hearth, the house and unity, she hated what her brother did, I sighed. That's fucked up, honey clicked her tongue. It is, I nodded, and don't even make me start with Poseidon, who was like Zeus but worse. Her other brother? Honey muttered. Yep, Zeus while an asshole, liked the process of getting your panties down, it was a challenge to him, while he did fuck some, he liked it better when they gave him what he wanted willingly, Poseidon on the other hand, that bastard would fuck and do shit like that just because he could, I sighed, while yes, Zeus fucked more people than all the gods in his law pantheon together, what little Poseidon did was arguably worse. No wonder Hestia wants to stay single, Honey shuddered, that family is fucked up, and that is saying something, because I come from hell. Hestia is the one, soul in that house of horrors that is pure and gentle, I smiled, she really was special. A golden soul amongst the shitty of the shit. Oh well, I still think you would make a great boyfriend, you have a good head above your shoulders, you actually care for others. Your main intention is never to get laid, and you have a very 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 nice dick, Honey smiled, say what now? Honey. How do you know how my dick looks like? I asked, a bit worried about what the answer was going to be. 
I have my ways, Honey winked. Athena point of view. Adam had come back from wherever he had been hiding, the innocent young god that had suffered under the misjudgment of my father, as many had before him. Then again, I can hardly blame Zeus for this one, like him, I too like the entirety of Olympus relied on Apollo to see if someone was lying to us, and that had proved to be our lamentable downfall with Adam, a regrettable incident that I intended to try and fix. Perhaps I could start a civilized conversation with him now that I knew where he was, where I would offer I'm an alliance between our realms, but I had a strong feeling he would not be interested in an alliance, not just yet. But I had to do something, I did not want to elucidate my failure to Olympus the next meeting. Besides, there was something different with Adam, he was vastly stronger than he should have been by now, but that wasn't it. His behavior was almost as if he was experiencing some kind of malaise that had him on an edge. And this obfuscated me, to no end. The Adam I had been watching in camp and this one were like two different individuals. His aura was dark and downright dangerous now, opposed to his giddy and friendly one a few months ago. It was both terrifying and scintillating, I couldn't help myself but wonder what had changed. If I had to take an educated guess, I would say his power was above mine, not by much, but it was, and he had been a god for less than a year, it terrified me to no end, what would happen if he continued to grow at this rate unchecked, unallied with Olympus, this was something my father failed to see, it was best for us to have him in our side, because as our enemy, he would bring nothing but chaos and destruction if we didn't fix the bridge stupidity brought down. Perhaps I could try to be a real sycophant to gain his forgiveness, this was however a stretch. I doubted anyone but Hestia would manage to convince him to join us, so perhaps, my attempts to convince were not on the right target, perhaps I should focus my attention on Hestia. After all, like that foul demon that was walking him earlier said, he loves her, and men had proven to become idiots with little to no intelligence when it comes to love. I hope Hestia still considers me a friend, I sighed, if she did, this was a war I had already won, because for all his power, Adam was still a man, and one in love. Chapter 113 As I made my way to the gate to Asgard in Boston, I felt as if someone was spying on me and honey, it was a god, one I hadn't had the pleasure of meeting and judging by his or her power, it was one of the seated gods. But who? Poseidon, unlikely the guy has even more fish for brains than Percy, and the energy I felt didn't feel anything like Percy, but it did remind of Annabeth, based on that the only logical conclusion was, it was Athena. Now, that made things interesting. Athena was one of gods I had no real opinion of, I mean. I hadn't interacted with her, then again, she was the same group I had most gods, after all. I considered most of my kind deplorable, but even then, I didn't harbor any hard feelings for her. But that was not to say, I would not hesitate to fight her, should she prove to be hostile. Honey, tell Hestia I sent you okay? I patted the succubi on the head, and with my magic teleported her to Asgard, and now that I was alone, Athena, I don't know if you knew, but spying on people is quite rude, so come out, I wouldn't want to spank you. I chuckled, realizing that sounded more badass in my head and quite less horny. Adam, Athena descended from a building, spirit hand, normally, I would say, it's a pleasure to meet you, but the circumstances are rather bad, don't you say? I eyed the goddess of wisdom with curiosity, noticing she was both tensed and relaxed and I couldn't help but wonder why. Yeah. Bad things happened, I chuckled, index finger pointing at her spear, is that part of your outfit, or you are just that happy to see me, a boner joke, nailed it. One must take precautions when meeting with an hostile god, Athena replied, and for some reason that comment made me inexplicably angry. Precautions, I chuckled bitterly, that's a nice way of saying. You and your dad are afraid of what you sow. We made a mistake, of that I have no doubts, Athena nodded, you have every right to hate Zeus for what he did to you. You know what's funny? 
I chuckled, I didn't hate him, not for real, at least not until he sent my sister to hurt Hestia. I hated Luke, and Kronos, still do, but your dad? I didn't hate him until he had the fucking audacity of trying to hurt Hestia, even after Tartarus I didn't have any sort of hate for him, he was a stranger. The ones I harbored negative emotions to were my family, Apollo, Artemis, for abandoning me, but Zeus. I knew before Tartarus I was worth a flying fuck to him, the feeling was mutual, that changed when he hurt Hestia. And what will you do? Athena asked, her narrowing at me, as if trying to find something within me. Isn't it obvious? I smiled, I will kill him. Bold words, for a new god, Athena replied, in a rather calm manner. I've been a god for less than a year, I hummed, and yet my power is already above yours, I pointed out, give me a few months, and I will have Zeus on his knees, no homo. I see, Athena looked to the side, it's true, that if anyone has a chance is you, wait what? Your power is, rather big for your age, in terms of gods, you are but a newborn child, and yet, your power is around my uncles, maybe lower if we count experience in battle, but still, a rather surprising feat considering your age, she paused, giving me a long scrutinizing look, even in terms of political relationships you are doing better than him, so perhaps yes, perhaps you will be the one to take his throne. Well, that was something I wasn't expecting, I expected a different response. I tried to dethrone him once, Athena chuckled, I knew I wasn't as strong as him and that I would never be, but I was a fierce believer of the saying, brains over brawn. <laughs> I planned everything, from where to strike to when, and with the help of Hera, Apollo and Poseidon we tried and almost succeeded in binding him and ending in the process his rule. I heard the story, I nodded. Do you know why I did it then? Athena asked and I shook my head, my mother, is inside of him, forever trapped like Kronos did with his children, I begged him to let her go, that if he didn't bed her, he would not have the so-called second child that would according to the prophecy dethrone him, at that she chuckled bitterly, he wouldn't budge, so. I decided to try and save her myself with the help of those that didn't like how he ruled us, and well, everyone knows how that ended. To this day, my mother is still trapped. I didn't know that, I said. The books say he didn't punish me, that I managed to talk my way out of it, Athena snorted, we all got punished, worse than any history book or myth has told, Poseidon and Apollo were forced to live as a mortal's human for 500 years, unable to die. For a god, that sounds awful, going from a mortal to mortal, that sounds hard. The punishment they suffered, was more than the words I used, can describe, tell me Adam, what would happen to a human if he couldn't die, but still aged. Athena asked and my eyes widened, I see you realized, yes. Poseidon and Apollo suffered a lot for my plan, perhaps was destiny making them for they had done to that point, she concluded. And you? I asked. He cursed me to be, as humans say, mentally disabled, but worse, I had no control over my body. I was less independent than a baby, Athena shuddered, for 500 years. All I could do was suffer within the walls of my mind, seeing others laugh and abuse me. Loving father, I muttered, and Hera was hanged from the skies, right? That's partly true, Athena nodded. Zeus blocked her powers with the same chains we commissioned to bind him and hanged Hera really close to the epicenter of the deity known as Chaos, with her powers locked by the chains and at the mercy of Zeus to come back and release her. All she could do was beg the universe itself he would forgive her in fear Zeus would not, and he would drop her into Chaos killing her. That's, harsh, but I'll be honest, I sighed, is this your speech to talk me out of going against him? You are basically giving more reasons to do so. No, while originally my intention was to convince you or Hestia to come back, as any option would have ended in both you and Hestia coming back, I have during this conversation decided otherwise, Athena stated. And that is? I asked. I will help you, Athena replied, boy was I not prepared for today. 
Chapter 114 I eyed the goddess in a perplexing manner, did she really say what she said? She wanted to help me dethrone her fathers, you want to betray Zeus, isn't that convenient? While she had reasons to make this declaration believable, I was skeptical, I wasn't the same trusty guy I used to be. I don't blame you, nor feel insulted by your skepticism, Athena sighed, her eyes closing for a brief moment, this is something I decided on the go, my main objective was to bring you back one way or another for the good of Olympus, but that changed when I saw you, maybe I'm being stupid, or maybe this is the right decision, but regardless of the nature of my decision, I firmly believe if anyone has a chance to dethrone him it's you, she sighed, giving me long hard look, politically. Speaking, you have a better standing already, Hades would most likely side by your side. And so would Persephone that in turn gives you Demeter, Hestia would most likely bring more supporters to your cause. I find your sudden change of heart rather odd, I admitted, but let's say I believe you, what do you want me to do? Trust you? I chuckled. In war when making allies one must make sacrifices, Athena stated and I snorted. Maybe, but I rather avoid them if possible. I replied, after all, I had no guarantee her words were true, if I open that door to her, she could very well be the cause of my demise. Understandable, Athena nodded, then it will be me, the one making the sacrifice. I blinked, what? You have been betrayed, and hurt by those who should have protected you, Athena sighed, her golden eyes locking into mine. I can't blame you for being like you are right now, so I will be the one to make the first sacrifice in our relationship. To say I was confused was an understatement, I mean. I was ready to throw hands with her when I felt her presence, not make an alliance, this was out of my comfort zone. By a few miles, I don't quite understand, what is this sacrifice you are speaking of? I surrender my realms to you, Athena bowed ever so lightly from this day to the day you deem me worthy of your trust. You are the keeper of my realms. Wisdom, reason, strategy, warfare, craft and arts, and the patron of heroic endeavors. I eyed the goddess for a brief second, why? I want to help you, Athena stated, I want to end the cycle he started, and whether I like it or not, you are our best shot. Besides, if Hestia abandoned her family for you, you must be really special. Special? Ha! <laughs> a special problem perhaps, very well, the moment I said that, a light flew from her head to mine, and suddenly I felt connected to her realms, not like I was with mine, this was less intimate, and more like my head was a prison for her realms. Now, I recommend we leave, Athena stated, it won't be long before Zeus feels what I have done, and while you are certainly stronger than ever before, he stills reigns over you. Give me a month, or two, I shrugged with a cocky smile. A year ago, I would have laughed at that, Athena admitted, but at the rate your power has been increasing, I can't help but feel it's very possible for you to accomplish such deed. Very well, let's leave this place then, and with that I teleported us to Asgard, I wonder if Hestia was going to be happy about this. In some myths Athena and her were friends. Hestia point of view. A succubi had been teleported to my room, and well. I was needless to say rather surprised at this development. So taking a deep breath I approached the demon and I felt something coming off from her, a very familiar energy. Adam, you belong to Adam? It felt somewhat sour to say that, maybe it was because I never expected Adam to own slaves. I kind of forced him into having me as a slave, the succubi giggled, he was not happy about that, at all. Forced, had she raped Adam? No, that was impossible, Adam had more than enough power to kill her if she tried anything funny, why are you here? I asked. Well, your secret crush sent me here because he felt someone was following us, the succubi replied, and my hand twitched for a brief second, don't get angry, I just call them like I see them, lover boy likes you, and well. I can feel you like him too, she wiggled her eyebrows. Adam liked me. Of course he did, 
We were best friends, family, and family loved each other, of course I love him, and he loves me, that's what a family do. The succubi stared at me blankly, he said you were a virgin, but to be this dense, she sighed, sweetheart, he likes likes. You. My eyes widened at that, so she was implying Adam loved in a romantic way, I see, well. I was lost for words, Adam was a sweet kid with a gentle heart, and I was the eternal virgin of the hearth, he deserved better. Falling in love with someone that could never reciprocate was not something I didn't want for him, and yet, the idea of him loving other made me feel odd. Is that jealousy I feel? The succubi giggled, and my eyes widened, oh my I think it is. Was that jealousy? I, maybe, I sighed, but even if I do have feelings beyond family for him. I can't never act upon them, love, that kind of love, only brought suffering and pain, that was a lesson I learned when I was but a child. Adam is not Zeus or Poseidon, or Kronos, the succubi stated, but if you have to reject him, please don't break his heart, he has suffered more than any of us can possibly imagine. Chapter 115 Reluctantly I took Athena with me to Asgard, she had given me a lot to think of, and for now, I would give her the benefit of the doubt. One that she would pay dearly if she tried to break, needless to say. Hestia was more than happy with this development. She loved her niece and probably missed her family a lot, so having Athena close would ease her broken heart, at least for a bit. Have in mind Athena, should you betray me in any way, there is no god alive that will fix what I will do to you, I threatened, to which Athena nodded. I shall keep that in mind, Athena stated. So, who's the tomboy? Honey whispered. Athena, the goddess of wisdom and warfare, I chuckled, tomboy, that's a good but inaccurate depiction of her that somehow fit her like a glove, why do you think she's a tomboy? Honey giggled, she walks like she has something between her legs. Oh. Maybe she's what some call a trap. I, how? Honey has but ten hours in the human world, and she already knows what a trap is, how is that freaking possible? I, how do you know what traps are? Odin showed me some pics of you and a big burly guy going to a trap convention, Honey replied, yep. I was going to kill Odin very slowly. That son of a bitch, I muttered, so, did you meet Hestia? She's the best, isn't she? I did, Honey giggled, we had a long conversation about you and stuff. I eyed the succubi with curiosity, about what stuff? I asked. I don't remember, Honey smiled, oh god, I hope she didn't tell Hestia I might have or not a crush on her. The last thing I need is to make our relationship weird, I can't afford to lose her. Fine keep your secrets, you little rascal, I ruffled her hair, but I will find out, one way or another, at that. I laughed with my signature evil laugh, one that I hadn't used in a long time. Oh, is evil maniacal laugh time? Hestia popped out of nowhere and started to laugh with me, while Honey and Athena that was coming in, looked at us like we were crazy. I have so many questions, Athena muttered, probably double-guessing her alliance. Meh. Honey shrugged, if it makes them happy, who cares, right? Zeus' point of view. Athena had betrayed me, after everything I gave her, after all this time, she had dared to cross me? Her father. Her king. Saying that I was mad was a fucking understatement of the century, I was fucking furious, first Hestia, then Athena? Holy shit, Ares whistled, who would have thought my dear sister had the balls to do this, he chuckled. I have to admit, this was largely unexpected. I mean Hestia? But Athena? Hera muttered. The kid is gathering more and more support, Demeter stated with a bored look, who would have thought he was going to become such a threat, to sway the likes of Athena to his side. I think it's rather obvious why Athena is doing it, Poseidon scoffed, glaring at me, you ate her mother, and no matter how obedient she was, you refused to let Métis go, I bet all she wants is her mother out of your belly. 
Métis betrayed me the moment she was prophesied to have a child in the future stronger than me, I barked, and for that, she will remain within me, for betraying me. As you wish, Poseidon rolled his eyes. Maybe I should go and bring her back? Apollo offered, but before any of us had a chance to say anything about that, someone started clapping. What a nice reunion we are having, that voice, that aura. Adam, long time no see Zeus, he waved at me, and then, with a darker tone, he directed his attention to my son, Ares. You came to accept your divine punishment? I growled, perhaps the kid had finally accepted he was an idiot and that surrendering was his one and only option. No, Adam laughed, oh God, you really need to get out of that pedestal you have yourself in. And before anyone tries to attack, please remember this is but a magical construct, nothing more. What do you want? I growled, I might as well get some information as to where he was so that I could strike him down once and for all. To quote a very vindictive fish, Adam cleared his throat, Zeus, allow me to impress upon you the severe mistake you have made. For years my conduct was largely benign, pranks and stuff, nothing terrible. And yet, without provocation, you have severed our détente by hurting not only me but Hestia, and therefore forced me to unleash upon you the vengeful flames of a thousand suns. For those that stand beside Zeus, you shall all curse your mothers for the day of your birth for I will destroy those who stood by him, cleaving them in twain, and as you gaze upon the smoking wreckage that was once your life, you will regret the day you crossed the wrong god. You dare. I growled. I will destroy you, Zeus, no matter the cost, and with that, the magical construct exploded. I don't recall a fish saying that, Poseidon muttered. I must investigate this, if said fish exists, I must recruit him. Adam point of view. Well, with that declaration of war, there was nothing else to do but prepare myself to make questionable choices and even more questionable alliances. This was a long coming, Zeus had crossed the line of no return a long time ago, and for it, he would pay in blood. For I would stop at nothing to kill him, consuming his tainted soul, bringing forth his definite end. Well, there is no turning back now, Athena sighed, I advise you to start gathering allies, this war won't be easy at all. He already has allies, good ones at that, Odin chuckled, I haven't been in a good war in a long time, the Norse king chuckled. Sure, why not? Sun Wukong shrugged, it seems like fun, when did he get here? If we play our cards right, we have a chance to end this war without much bloodshed, Athena sighed, Poseidon would jump at the opportunity of killing Zeus, and with Hades in your side, this could very well bring many minor gods to your side, as well as some big ones, like Demeter. This marks the end of part 23 of the story, Percy Jackson, the God of Magic. Thank you for listening. Please like the video and hit the subscribe button to listen more. Hit the bell icon to get notified of all the new content uploaded to the channel ASAP.